Do you think of yourself as a nice guy, as a good man? Do you think of yourself as something that is lovable? Do you think people should love you for who you really are? Do you think that there's something inside of you that people should just appreciate? Then this video is definitely for you. Today we're going to shine some harsh truth on why nice guys actually are the most selfish people out there, why nice guys don't really get what they want and why being yourself is often simply not good enough. And if you're interested in my critical perspective on this, then be sure to stick around. But before we start, what's going on powerful people? My name is Benjamin and I welcome you to today's video. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you're not missing out on any future videos. If you're already subscribed, thanks a lot. Where do we start? We have two main points that I want to discuss. Firstly, nice guys and secondly, why being yourself is not enough. Let's start with nice guys. If you think of yourself as a nice guy, then this might be the most selfish thing there is. Because most of these so-called nice guys aren't actually nice people. They think of themselves as nice, but they aren't. And this is for one simple reason. If you take a look at it, then nice guys are most often referred to when it comes to dating. But even in their general life. If we just take a look at the bigger picture of these so-called nice guys, then one thing becomes very eminent. These nice guys always expect something in return. Most of the people that call themselves nice guys have a huge expectancy from others. They think, I'm going to be nice and I'm going to get this in return. I'm going to be nice to the woman, I'm going to get sex in return. I'm going to be nice to this one and I'm going to get my promotion. I'm going to be nice to my friends and they are going to invite me to the cinema. I'm going to be nice to my family and I get a big fat check from them. The point is nice guys always have this conditional expectancy. They always expect something in return, which makes them inherently selfish. If you think about, if you are really a good person and if you're really nice, then you are not keeping score. If you're a nice person in a relationship or if you're a nice person in general, then you like doing nice things for other people. You like helping. You actually like being a good person. But what is the one thing that a good person would never say? The good person is normally humble enough and would never claim to be a good person. This is something good people just don't do. They help a lot, they do all of the right things and they simply don't claim to be nice people. Because let's face it, through their actions it shines through. If someone is constantly helping out the poor, if someone is constantly doing just and right things, then we quickly recognize, hey, this dude is clearly a good person. He doesn't need to say it. But all these people that say, hey, I'm a good person, why am I not successful in dating? These people are not necessarily good people because they think they are nice, they are always friendly or they act friendly, they act appropriately, they try to do nice things but their intention is not genuine. They always have in the back of their head, hey, what am I going to get in return? If I'm going to be friendly here, what is the outcome that I can expect? What is in it for me? So the nice people or the guys that say they are nice are genuinely just interested in themselves. They just want to get something out of you. They just want this transactional reciprocity. I do something for you, you do something for me. I invite you for dinner, you come to bed with me. A genuinely nice person would say, hey, come on, let's go to dinner and we can have some fun. Period. That's it. No thoughts about what's happening afterwards. Nothing. Just, hey, let's have a good time. That's it. The nice guy, on the other hand, always has this thought in his head, what can I get? What can I get? Most of the time you ask these people, hey, why are you still single? And the answer is, well, I'm too nice. Chances are you might not be too nice, but you're very transactional. You always have this expectancy that someone else has to do something for you. And to a certain extent I understand this. If you are in a relationship or if you have been in a relationship, sometimes there comes up the thought, hey, she did this and that, maybe I do this and that in return. This just comes up every now and then, but it's not healthy to keep score. 
If you're in a relationship, then you should do something for the good of the other person because you want to do something good for them, not because you expect something in return, not because you want to be there one day and say, hey, remember that day when I cleaned the dishes? You have to do this now. No. You do stuff because you genuinely want to do them, because you genuinely want to take a little bit of their work and help them out. That's what a really nice person does. A nice person does not expect anything in return. Which brings us to the second point of this video, which is why being yourself is simply not good enough. On the one hand, I get that each human being has a certain sense of value and stoicism is something that also says humans should be appreciated for the character that they have. But if you look around, then we have to quickly realize some people are just not really cool, nice, friendly people. Some people are just douchebags. Some people are just pricks. And if you're just a prick, if you're just a douchebag, if you're just an idiot and you're ignorant and you expect that people should like you for it, then ask yourself, why would they? If you're constantly whining about everything, if you're constantly negative, if you only see the bad stuff on life, if you only bitch about how bad your job is, how bad university is, how miserable everyone treats you, then why would I like to spend time with you? I don't want to be dragged into a hole full of misery, so why should I spend time with you? Most of the time, these people don't even want to spend time with themselves. They struggle to be alone. Just sitting there and thinking is not really something they want to do, because there come up so many negative thoughts, so much rambling about how bad the world is and everything along those lines. And now I'm asking you, if you can't even live with yourself, then how should anyone else do it? If you can't accept your own life, if you can't accept your situation, if you don't accept responsibility to change something, then why would anyone else be with you? Why would anyone spend time with you? There's simply no apparent reason for it. So if you well fucked up in the genetic lottery, or maybe your parents raised you in a very bad situation and you are now, let's say, just a little bit fucked up in the head and you have some very negative perspectives on life, then why would you expect that people want to spend time with you if you don't change it? Because the stuff that's going on in your head, while it's difficult, it can be changed. Read some books, read some philosophy, do some meditation, make some self-improvement. And over time, you become a genuinely nice guy. You become genuinely a better person. If you just look at the statement, accepting someone for who he is, what does this really mean? I could transfer the statement onto my dog. Should I accept my dog for who he is? Yes, I should probably do so. He's a dog, so I treat him like a dog and not like a cat, not like a bird, not like a mouse, not like a human. I accept him for who he is. But what I don't accept is all of his behaviors. If I'm not training with him, if I'm not doing stuff with him, then he is running around, biting my goddamn table, shitting on the floor, peeing on the carpet, and all of this good stuff, munching on my pillows, all the stuff that I don't want. This is behavioral problems, which I could just leave there. But I'm saying, hey, I accept you for who you are, but I don't accept these behaviors. These behaviors, are not good. They are not acceptable. So I'm training to get all of them out. I'm potty training my dog. I'll make sure that he doesn't eat random stuff in my room. I make sure that he doesn't bark every time the door opens and all of these behavioral things. And this is something that you need to do with yourself as well. If my dog would be allowed to do everything that he would naturally do, then my flat would look like an absolute mess and nobody would like to come around. Okay, I'm not really inviting people anyways, but that's not the topic of this video. What I'm saying is, if you let all these negative behaviors in there, then things are going to be bad. And this applies to humans as well. If you have all these bad behaviors, all these bad habits, all these bad thoughts, all this negativity, then people can accept you for who you are, but they don't like spending time with you. If you're lazy and slacking all day, if you're not doing anything out of yourself, if you're just playing video games and drinking all day, then I accept you for who you are, but I don't want to spend time with you. It's that simple. 
I want to spend time with people that actually do something in their life. I want to spend time with people that follow something they love doing. I want to spend time with people that are interesting. I want to spend time with people that at least to an extent have their life under control. I get it. We're all young. We're all struggling to keep our lives under control. We're all struggling with the responsibilities of being a grown up. We're all struggling with figuring out how to go through life. I'm not expecting you to master all of these quickly, but what I am expecting is that you at least have the motivation and the will to change something. If the life you're living right now is not working, but you blame it on everything else, on all these external things, then I'm not willing to take up with this. And most other people are not willing to take up with this either. For example, let's say you're lucky and you get into a relationship for some weird reason. Then the woman you are with or the man you are with will eventually realize, hey, he's not really doing anything. He's just lazy, just sitting around. We're not going out. We're not doing interesting stuff. He isn't interesting. And he stinks all day. He doesn't do jack shit. Why do I stick with him again? It doesn't really make sense. It doesn't add up. If your behaviors are just terrible, then people won't want to spend time with you. This means you need to improve yourself. If you don't improve yourself, sucks to be you. And I know this is harsh and a lot of people will be like, oh, but I want her to accept me. Oh, why don't people accept me for who I am? Because who you are right now is completely fine. What they don't accept is your current behaviors. They accept you as a human being. They don't accept your childish behaviors. There's a big gap between accepting someone for who he is and accepting filthy behaviors. If you don't behave yourself, people don't want to spend time with you. If you don't behave yourself, you're not getting the right job. If you don't behave yourself, you're not getting into university. And what behave yourself really means depends upon perspective. But generally speaking, you live in a society of people and there are some cultural guidelines. And if you just try to deviate from all of them, then how can you expect to be accepted into this exact culture? So what did we learn in today's video? Firstly, if you think of yourself as a nice guy, then really think about whether you're really a nice guy or whether you just expect something in return, whether you're just nice for the sake of getting something out of it. Because if you always expect something in return, then you're not really a nice guy. Instead, you're really a transactional selfish guy because you want something. You do something because you want something in return. You don't do it for the sake of doing it. You're doing it for getting something. And secondly, ask yourself, what behaviors do you exert? What characteristics do you have that are simply not appropriate? What are the areas in your life where you're just slacking? What is the thing that really makes you stand out in a negative way? Are you overly negative? Are you incredibly filthy? Don't you have a job? Don't you have a hobby? Don't you know what to do with your life? Are you just playing video games? Are you just watching Netflix all day? What is the fundamental behavior that you have that is making you into, let's say, a suboptimal person? At the end of the day, you need to understand that people accept who you are. They just don't accept the behaviors that you currently have. The good thing is behaviors can be changed. Yes, it might be difficult. It might take you some time. It might be tedious, hard work. But if you're really willing to put in the work, then you can change almost any behavior. Being at your constant procrastination, being at you simply being lazy or being at constantly thinking negative things. Whatever it may be, behaviors can be changed and influenced as long as you're willing to take that step. If you're willing to make that step, if you're willing to make a change and grow yourself as a human being, then be sure to hit the subscribe button so you're not missing out on any future self-improvement videos because that's what this channel is all about. That being said, I have two more videos for you right here that you should watch next. I wish you a wonderful day and I will be seeing you in the very next video.